Did you know there's a massive piece of land lurking right beneath the surface of the Pacific Ocean, stretching from New Caledonia to far south of New Zealand? It is believed to be either the world's biggest microcontinent or even the world's eighth continent. Its name? Zealandia. Join us as we journey back in time and learn about the fascinating history of this mysterious continent. Around 550 million years ago, Gondwana land formed, effectively gathering together all the land in the southern hemisphere like a massive family reunion. Zealandia was nestled comfortably on the eastern side of this gigantic land family. It was cozying up to half of West Antarctica on one side and the whole of Eastern Australia on the other. However, the bonds that held Zealandia to its neighbors couldn't last forever. Around 100 million years ago, Zealandia decided it was time to part ways with Antarctica. Then, about 20 million years later, it separated from Australia as well. Unfortunately, Zealandia's journey hasn't been all smooth sailing. Ever since its departure from Gondwana land, it's been slowly sinking and eroding. This is because its crust is relatively thin and there's been a lot of tectonic activity over the years. By approximately 23 million years ago, it's thought that Zealandia may have been completely submerged. Picture that, a landmass the size of Greater India slowly but surely disappearing beneath the waves over the course of millions of years. Isn't it mind-boggling that the vast majority of Zealandia, 94% to be exact, is hidden beneath the waves? Only a small portion peeks out above the sea level, manifesting as islands and islets that are like the tip of a gigantic iceberg. In fact, the most significant parts of Zealandia that we can actually see and set foot on are none other than the beautiful New Zealand and the exotic New Caledonia. But don't be fooled by the quiet, serene surface of the ocean. There's plenty going on beneath those waters. Zealandia is not just a massive sunken landmass, it's a thriving hub of natural resources. It plays host to abundant inshore fisheries teeming with all sorts of marine life. In addition to this thriving marine life, Zealandia is also sitting on a treasure trove of natural gas fields. Picture the largest one, the New Zealand Maui gas field near Taranaki. It's like Zealandia's hidden gold mine a precious resource nestled within the depths of the continent. Zealandia isn't just about resources in marine life, though. It's also an invaluable library of knowledge for scientists from all over the world. Zealandia's submerged fossils serve as a window into the past, providing us with precious insights into life during glacial periods. You see, when sea levels were lower and Zealandia was less submerged, a whole new world of flora and fauna thrived. Today, the fossils from that time act like postcards from the past, offering scientists clues about life during these different periods. And just when we thought we had Zealandia figured out, a 2021 study turned our understanding of this submerged landmass on its head. Scientists discovered that Zealandia might be much older than we previously thought, almost 1 billion years old. That's twice as old as previous estimates. Now let's take a walk in Zealandia's once thriving landscape. Picture the Kofi tree, a botanical beauty that adorned Zealandia with its radiant yellow flowers. These flowers were like magnets to native birds, such as the tui and kaka. And then there was the mamaku, a tree fern that could grow an astonishing 20 meters tall. This giant of the plant kingdom didn't just boast size though, it had edible fleshy parts, making it an important source of food in the ecosystem. Climbing up the massive mamaku, you might have found the kiki. This unique plant was not just an integral part of the scenery, but it was also a valuable resource for the Maori people, who used it for weaving baskets and mats. The nayo, a shrub or small tree, would have been hard to miss with its attractive white flowers. However, its leaves were toxic, a defense mechanism against hungry herbivores. The Maori people put these leaves to good use though, using them for dyeing and medicinal purposes. No journey through Zealandia's ancient landscape would be complete without marveling at the ponga, or the silver fern, which is a national symbol of New Zealand today. And finally, there was clematis vine draped over the trees, its large white flowers blooming in the springtime. In Maori, it's known as huawananga, or the flower of the skies. But Zealandia's natural wonders didn't stop at its plant life. This land was once home to an array of extraordinary creatures too, such as Moa, the world's largest and heaviest bird. 
wandering Zealandia's prehistoric plains. These flightless birds towered over the landscape, reaching up to an astonishing 3.6 meters in height. The skies of Zealandia were ruled by the Hast's eagle, the most powerful raptor that ever lived. With a wingspan of up to 3 meters, this giant eagle was capable of hunting large prey like the moa and deer. Imagine stumbling upon a tuatara, an ancient reptile that's the only living member of an order dating back to the time of the dinosaurs. With its spiky crest and a mysterious third eye, the tuatara looks like a creature straight out of a fantasy book. Among these giants, the kiwi bird, which is today the national symbol of New Zealand, made its humble entrance onto the scene. Despite its small size, it had a long curved bill and laid one of the largest eggs relative to its body size in the bird world. And then there were insects, such as the giant dragonfly. With a wingspan reaching up to 70 centimeters, this giant insect was a master of the skies, clocking flying speeds of up to 60 kilometers per hour. However, around 150 million years ago, due to changes in the climate and competition from birds, this winged titan went extinct. Then there was the giant centipede, which can grow up to a whopping two meters long. However, it met its end around 65 million years ago due to the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event, which wiped out a significant amount of life on Earth. And last, but certainly not least, we have the giant Weta. Now, unlike its fellow giants, the giant Weta still exists today, although in a much smaller size than its ancestors. This fascinating creature is one of the heaviest insects in the world, tipping the scales at a hefty 70 grams. But there was more to Zealandia. Let's turn back the clock to the chilling glacial periods when enormous glaciers and vast ice sheets blanketed parts of Zealandia. These frozen titans were nature's sculptors, chiseling out deep fjords, shaping valleys, and crafting lakes. What's more, they even lowered the sea levels, revealing more land and creating pathways to other continents. And then in the northern regions of Zealandia, like New Caledonia, where the climate turned a tropical page. Here, high temperatures, humidity, and rainfall reigned supreme, and the landscapes were adorned with spectacular coral reefs, expansive mangroves, and lush rainforests, a vibrant scene that bore more resemblance to the paradises of Oceania and the South Pacific. Now, we can't talk about Zealandia without paying homage to its indigenous inhabitants, the Maori people. They made the daring voyage from eastern Polynesia to Zealandia about 700 years ago, navigating the vast ocean in their sturdy canoes. Over centuries, they created an intricate tapestry of culture and traditions, rich oral histories, profound spirituality, stunning art, and complex social organizations. They skillfully harnessed local resources for sustenance and shelter, painting a vivid picture of harmonious human-nature interaction. However, the 17th century brought new faces to the shores of Zealandia, Abel Tasman. The Dutch navigator was the first European to lay eyes on New Zealand in 1642, followed by the British explorer James Cook in 1769. They charted the coastlines, initiated trade with the Maori people, and introduced foreign species and diseases. These explorers also claimed parts of Zealandia for their nations, igniting tensions that led to conflicts and eventual colonization. Alongside the Maori people and the European explorers, Zealandia was also a melting pot of other Pacific Islanders. In places like New Caledonia, various Melanesian groups, such as the Kanak people, thrived. These communities upheld their unique languages, customs, and beliefs. Moreover, they maintained robust connections with other islanders, including Fijians, Tongans, Samoans, and Hawaiians, weaving a complex network of relationships through trade, migration, and warfare. But most of all, Zealandia is characterized by its dynamic volcanic activity. Now, Zealandia isn't your average continental neighborhood. It's perched right on the boundary of two massive tectonic plates, the Pacific Plate and the Australian Plate. This precarious position turns the land into a seething hotbed of geological activity. Think of towering volcanoes belching out plumes of smoke, geysers, sporadically spewing steam, serene hot springs bubbling away, and the ground frequently quaking under the relentless tectonic forces. Some of these volcanoes even birthed islands, like the Kermadec Islands and the Chatham Islands, rising majestically from the ocean depths. But this dramatic geological activity had its darker side too, like the catastrophic Topo eruption in 232 CE, one of history's most explosive volcanic events which dramatically altered the landscape. 
In all its aspects, geological, biological, and cultural, Zealandia is a sunken treasure trove of knowledge and resources, a submerged world with stories still waiting to be unearthed and shared with the masses.